Alright guys, this is Dograft and today we are driving the E75 on El Halouf. And as you can see, this is a great matchup for this tank. I am top tier, I only have to fight 3 tier 9 tanks and the rest is all tier 8. Well guys, first of all, the E75 is totally overpowered. It has great all-round armor, if you can angle it correctly. The gun is really punchy, but it doesn't really have such a high dpm but you can make this gun work if the e75 just can work its targets slowly and it is just what was going to happen well guys i was having an absolutely awful day again the e75 i was driving it to grind my e100 and i had very bad battles such a bad battles that i finally realized that i had to play really aggressive in this tank and when I reached my highest point of aggressivity, this game appeared and it went so good. It went so good. But as you can see guys, this is El Aloof. At normal, you may think this is a awful map. It's called the campground because as you can see, 50% of my team is camping at the base and camping at the other side of the ridge there. But as you can see, there's no artillery on the enemy team, so I was willing to take my chances and get over towards this flank and work down the enemy. That was what I was thinking and I am going up here to get some cover from these rocks slash sand. Yeah, oops. And I am driving over towards this aggressive position. And now I am going to make my first misplay. I am so greedy to take a shot at this T-34 that I didn't angle my tank correctly. What the hell just happened? Okay. Didn't angle my tank correctly and I was it was easily putting a shot into my sight there. Really bad play by me. But then I realized, okay, don't get too greedy. Take the time you need. Oh, and now I am pushing back. Yeah, driving backwards on this hill because I don't have enough gun depression to take a shot at this low. But now I have, so... There we go. Really nice tactic there to use that hill behind me. And now I'm just going to side scrape up against those camping enemies at the back there. And there you go, that's the first bounce. So, I will quickly give you an... Yeah, a little bit of eyesight about the armor of the 75 The frontal armor of this tank is... <laughs> Wait a second, look at that. That is what happens when you don't put a fire extinguisher on your tank, guys. Everybody who see this video, learn from it. Please learn from it. I was so lucky that that guy had a fire extinguisher. So, I've only shot four shots and it only gave, also gave me... Yeah, five shots now, and I have done just shy up to 3,000 damage. Well, I as I was telling, the E75 has got really good armor. It is 170 on the upper plate, 120 on the lower plate, of, uh, on the side armor. The turret is 252 millimeters on the front, 160 on the side. So it is a really strong tank indeed. And there's my first kill. As you can see, I am doing the right angling here. You always want to angle your E75 with the gun up on the corner of this tank. Where my line of where the number 14 is standing at this moment. But I am not angling like that right now because I am side scraping at my lower plate. Which is a weakness of the E75. It's really well covered behind this rock. So... It's not really much needed to yeah, angle my gun around this corner. It will only decrease the possibility that the enemy tanks will pen my side armor. There's the Waffenträger of Pencil 4. He's a really good enemy player. Nice shot into him. Always happy to damage the best enemy tank players. Always happy to. He's peeking out again. Take another shot. No, it's not gonna happen. So let's now take a look at the gun. The gun has... <laughs> As I was talking about the gun, this gun has 490 
alpha damage. As you can see, this is really punchy amount of damage. And the damage, yeah, penetration itself is 246, which is pretty good for its tier. It's not as much as the Conqueror has, but it's not a Conqueror. <laughs> The accuracy of this gun is 0.38. <laughs> Where I got pretty lucky with to hit the compoler on the yeah or the commander's hatch on the T34 there. But I was willing to take my chances and it went in, so just good result. Now heading over towards the other side of this rock to get a more yeah effective shots. Oh no, it's not gonna happen. I thought I was doing that, but it's not gonna happen. I'm staying in this position for a while and as you can see we're standing yeah the enemy is three tanks in front and I have already done 4,000 damage and the game hasn't really developed yeah fuck is it really that far into the game So the enemy started capping, but that's alright, but as you can see the KV-4 is not peeking out, but I want another shot onto him. So I go to this side of the map to try and get an effective fire onto him. Ooh, but there's the best player on the enemy team. Hello mate. And there's my second kill. Nice that the best player of the enemy team is dead now, so he's not that much of a threat anymore. As you can see, trying to get a bigger angle on the KV-4, but he's not interested in getting shot by me, unfortunately. So I am just heading over back towards my old spot. But now I can see that it, uh, we are four tanks below. The game has developed far enough. Three tanks below. Okay, there's the KV-4, one more shot. But the gear, my gun looped up, so my shell looped up as well. Doesn't really matter. But now we are four, down four tanks again, so it's time to play aggressive. What you always want to do when you are outnumbered is playing aggressively. Camping at the back or waiting until the enemies come to you is not an option. You have to be aggressive. You have to take them down one by one. Low roll though, the Tiger 2. But it does not really matter. He will be dead soon. And there you go, he's dead. So now I am making another best play. I'm driving into the open without thinking of which tanks are going to stand there. And I didn't angle my tank at all and I took a shot from the ice 3 but I was willing to take that shot. There's the KV-4. Trying to hit this compoler or the machine gun port. I don't really know what it is on there. And there you can see my homemade six cents. Pretty funny. No, the KV-4 is not coming out again. So I decided to try to get engagements on the other enemy tanks. So we're only down one tank now. So it brightened up a little bit. But this is really dangerous, really. I don't really know where the rest of the enemy tanks are located. Especially the T-32. He hasn't been spotted the whole of the battle. Also the Tiger 2 hasn't been spotted yet. Oh, there he is. There's the Tiger 2. He got spotted, but he spotted me as well. So that is not very fortunate for me. The Waffenträger can easily plan an engagement on me. The KV-4 can plan to make an engagement onto me. And the T-32 can also plan to make an engagement onto me. But as you can see, my backup fire just died. The Lorraine. And now I'm yeah, thinking by myself, okay, let's find that KV-4. But just as, as I am looking at my back, the KV-4 appears to my front. And now, I run him to death. You should have argued that I should have haven't done that because the KV-4 is 8 tons yeah, heavier than I am. Oh, M103 dangerous tank. Dead. So, other really dangerous enemy tank is dead. And there's the Waffen Trigger. 
put a nice shot onto me, couldn't have done anything about it. I was trying to turn my tank precisely on time. But I know, yeah, I actually I knew that he was going to try and make an engagement onto me. And now I'm trying to make it look that I'm going after him. But as you can see now, the Tiger 2 is on low health. I want to kill the enemies as quick as possible. Don't want any enemy tank to run around. And I don't really know why I have loaded gold at this moment. It's really unnecessary. I can easily pen all of the enemy tanks. But my heart was just going for it. But now I am making a misplay. I wanted that Waffen Trigger dead really badly, so I was willing to take the risk. I was pushing my luck at that moment, and it was really lucky that the Waffen Trigger bounced. I think he wasn't expecting me to come around that corner, or he wasn't pre aimed yet, so that's why he bounced. He might have shot out of panic, but I don't really know what he did. But as you can see in the chat, the enemies are already telling me the T32 is AFK. That was a really nice battle for me. It was actually pretty nice that the T32 was AFK. Gave me a little bit of a nice snack at the end of the game. Let's just speed up the replay a bit. There you go, there he is. Still have gold loaded, not really necessary. Still a gold shell, uh, gold shell loaded. Oh no, I'm loading my AP shells again. Good. I almost ran out out of armor piercing shells and I don't really know why I have that many high explosive shells but you can always change them you know there you go another nice shot and there you go he's a one shot now and I as you can see I'm asking desperately for my teammate to let me kill him but he's a really nice guy shout out to you free man free mario 80 big shout out to you if you will ever see this video or the replay really happy that you gave me this opportunity to get my second redley walters medal really lovely that was our eighth kill the second redley walters medal i've ever got i was really thrilled to pick this up it was really long ago that I got a Redley Walters medal. The last one, yeah, the first one actually was in my Carnarvon, which also was a really nice battle, but I was absolutely thrilled to have another game like this. And I think that is the bounce mark of the Waffle Trigger of Panzer 4 there on the lower plates. Pretty lucky bounce, but I think that I was angling correctly because he hit me at this angle, as you can see the shot right here. So that is pretty lucky that he bounced on there, but this tank is really overpowered in its armor as long as you can angle it correctly. So well guys, let's now take a look at the post-game stats. So guys, here are the post-game stats of that game and as you can see this indeed was a mastery badge in the E75. Yes, no shit, we know that. Look at that amount of experience. 2655 experience with a premium account that is 1770 base experience that is absolutely huge i don't even have any words for it i wasn't expecting to that game to be that great but as you can see we picked up the redley walters medal for killing eight enemy tanks we picked up the top gun medal for killing six enemy tanks the steel wall medal for receiving at least 1000 potential damage or damage blocked by armor i don't really know which of the two it is as well as in high caliber medal for doing the most damage on the team yeah on both teams 20 percent of all the enemy health points and a tank sniper medal for doing the most damage to the enemy vehicles from a distance of 300 meters in this game i made over 700 damage 700 404 to be precisely and that is absolutely huge it was the most damage i ever got in a game as well as the most experience ever got in a game and the kills yeah this actually was my record for 2k games or so now 
I got it once in the Carnarvon, I got it once in the Pencil 1C, of course, the Pencil 1C is totally overpowered. And now the third time in the E75, which got me my second Redley Walters medal. As you can see, the Borsig, which was alive uh, together with me at the end of the battle, also did really nice. He just, just shy upon 5000 damage, giving also him a really nice amount of experience. We got just shy upon 100,000 credits for this game, which got me just shy up onto 40,000 credits profit. As you can see, we've got to, yeah, we had to spend a lot of yeah, money on upon ammunition because I was actually firing unnecessarily gold, which I shouldn't have done in the first place. And I have done. Yeah, I have shot 24 shots, 21 hits and 19 penetrated, really, which is not really bad. But now we are, yeah, getting towards the damage. The damage, the damage uh, at a distance from 300 meters is just shy up onto 4000, which is not really bad. Hits received is, I can't really see that really well, is that 18? Yes, we received 18 hits, of which only seven penetrated or went into the tracks and 11 were bounces giving us a total amount of 4320 damage blocked by armor which is absolutely amazing i could have died two times there just to be exact and for the last the premium account got me 50 percent more experience at more credits than on the normal account so that gave me the 2655 experience all right guys i just wanted to give you a quick update of what is going on on my world of tanks at this moment as you can see i am dry trying to grind the e100 i've already collected almost 128 yeah oh, excuse me 120,000 experience so that is not quite a lot. I only have to collect myself, uh, let's say, 400 grand of credits. So that shouldn't be a really big problem. As you can see, I've bought premium for a few days. But that was only because I had to get the money for my E100. Because it's almost impossible again to collect 6.1 thousand credits if you want to collect a tier 10 tank and still keep the E75. Because should could see in the post game stat that is a really good mastery badge and it was my record of experience so I was really happy to pick up that game but after that battle it went even better and I collected two more high caliber medals in my E75 both games gave me 5000 damage but the second game gave me even something better as you can see on the gun barrel of my E75 there's a really weird mark here and that actually is the mark of excellence I got it at the second battle at Comarin with where I was platooned up with one of my friends Yogurt he was in his WZ111 the Chinese tier 9 heavy tank and I was of course in my E75 I did 5000 damage which gave me the first mark of excellence that meant that I have got more average damage in the E75 than 35% of all the players which have got the E75 and are playing in it. So that is really, yeah, I'm really happy to pick that up. So guys, whenever you see a tank with this mark or even, yeah, when the stripes are brighter, that means that the mark of excellence is even higher. This is third class. So it's really happy that I've got a mark of excellence. But when you see a tank with a mark of excellence, watch out. Because they know how to play that tank they are driving. Well guys, I am planning to make another on the hunt for the E100 episode. But it's going to take a long time. Because I am running off to America again this year. So you won't hear anything from me into the coming four weeks so don't expect to see videos maybe i will put up a vlog because i have a very nice yeah trip planned i am going towards a tank museum in washington so stay tuned to my channel if you want to watch that i'm really 
looking forward to that but guys this was my e75 video i hope you liked it please be sure to leave a like for that battle and for my mark of excellence i really did my best for it if you have got any questions about the e75 or any questions about world of tanks itself go along and ask them in the comments i will try to answer all the questions i get so that's about actually it's it I guess I will see you guys at the next video. Bye bye.